Good afternoon and welcome to our daily devotions where we are looking at the women of the Bible. This week we are focusing on Saul's daughter, Michael. This is part one of five where we take a look at her story. Her character. A woman of strong emotions, she was unable to control the important circumstances of her life. Forcibly separated from two husbands, she lost her father and her brother, who were savaged by their enemies. Her sorrow, that she was ensnared in the drawn-out battle between Saul and David. Her joy, though short-lived, she enjoyed a passionate love for David. Key scriptures, 1 Samuel chapter 18 verses 20 to 29 chapter 19, verses 11 to 17, 2 Samuel, chapter 6, verses 16 to 23. Her story. Scene 1. Michael stretched herself across the window's edge. Leaning out as far as she dared, she could see her husband running through the night shadows, his movements swift and lithe, like a young stag evading its predators. Even if her father, the king, pursued with an army, she was confident he would not catch her David. She had loved the shepherd boy since the day he had calmed Saul's troubled soul with his heart playing. After he defeated the hideous Goliath with only a sling and a stone, all Israel fell in love with him. But it was for her alone that David had slain 200 Philistines to prove his worth. She turned from the widow, grateful for the chance to have aided her husband's escape. Quickly she dressed one of the household idols, placing it in her bed and topping it with goat's hair to make it look like a sleeping David. She was ready for her father's men when they came pounding on her door. David is ill, she told them, so they returned to King Saul who immediately ordered them back, saying, Bring him up to me in his bed, so that I may kill him. Discovering the ruse, Saul confronted his daughter. Why did you deceive me like this and send my enemy away so that he escaped? Michael lowered her eyes and replied. He said to me, Let me get away. Why should I kill you? She held her breath, certain her father would never Swallow so bold a lie. Scene two. Nine years on, nine years or more have passed. Michael glanced out the window, arms folded tightly against her breast, observing the scene below. David, now the king, had entered Jerusalem, leaping and dancing as the Ark of the Covenant was carried into Jerusalem. He looked ridiculous to Michael, more like a romping goat than a great king. David offered the sacrifices and blessed the people. Then he entered his own house to bless it. But Saul's daughter met him with scornful eyes. How the king of Israel has distinguished himself today, disrobing in, his, in the sight of the slave girls of his servants as any vulgar fellow would. It was before the Lord who chose me, he replied, rather than your father, or anyone from the house when he appointed me ruler over the Lord's people Israel. I will celebrate before the Lord. I will become even more undignified than this, and I will be humiliated in my own eyes. But by these slave girls you spoke of, I will be held in honour. Twice Michael stood at a window observing David. In the first scene, scripture paints her as David's wife, in the second as Saul's daughter. In fact, her attitude is so changed that we feel perplexed watching her as she watches David. To understand what may have shaped Michael's heart in the intervening years, we need to find a corridor connecting the two windows, a passageway that somehow led from love to scorn. Michael may have expected her separation from David to be a short one, her idealism forging a happy ending to their fairy tale love. Perhaps she believed David would find a way to protect her from her father's wrath. Was she shocked 
when real life intervened and her father punished her by marrying her to another man? Did her bitterness grow during David's long absence? Had she finally made peace with her new marriage only to be torn from her husband when David demanded her back after Saul's death? Did she question God's judgments, identifying more with the dead than the living after her father perished in a desperate battle with the Philistines? Perhaps Michael's bitterness swelled to rage when she realised she had always been someone else's pawn, a mere woman manipulated by powerful men. Her own father used her, promising her to David in hopes that she would prove a snare to him. And finally, one of her brothers handed her back to David after Saul's death, further legitimising David's claim to the throne. A princess, then a queen. She was still a slave. Michael's story is tragic. Throughout the difficult circumstances of her life, we see little evidence of a faith to sustain her. Instead, she is tossed back and forth, her heart left to draw its own bitter conclusions. In the last scene with David, we see a woman blind with scorn, making the very mistake God cautioned the prophet Samuel against in his search for a king to succeed the way the wayward Saul. Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at things human beings look at. People look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. The truth is, God is the only one who can see into the depths of anyone's heart, including Michael's. He knew everything that had happened, both good and bad. Still, the story of Michael seems to indicate that she grew to be more like Saul than like David. As such, she reminds us that even victims have choices. No matter how much we've been sinned against, we still have the power to choose the attitude of our heart. If we cast ourselves on God's mercy, asking him to help us, he cannot refuse. Even in difficulty, he will dwell in us shaping our own wayward hearts into the likeness of his own. Thank you for listening. Michael's story lets us know that God knows our heart fully. He knows the ins and outs, the good, the bad. He knows everything that's going on and that we are encouraged to turn to him in all things and that he can turn all things for his good. So be encouraged and seek the Lord. Join me tomorrow as we take a look at her life and times with a particular focus on worship. Stay safe. Keep praying. God bless. Good afternoon and welcome to our daily devotions where we are looking at the women of the Bible. This week we are focusing on Saul's daughter, Michael. This is part two of five, where we take a look at her life and times with a particular focus on worship. When David brought the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem, after it had been in Philistine hands for a number of years, and after a fateful earlier attempt to move it, he did so with a deep sense of awe. The Ark was moved only six steps before he stopped and sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. Then, as the priest brought the ark into Jerusalem, David danced before the Lord with all his might. That's in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 14. And the people with him shouted and blew on trumpets. There was nothing subdued or restrained about David's worship of the Lord. The Psalms of praise he wrote also revealed his deep love for God a love so all-encompassing it could not be contained but burst forth in exuberant worship. Sacrifices and offerings were an important part of worship in the Old Testament times. Since sin separated the worshipper from God, sacrifice was needed to re-establish the relationship and make true worship possible. The response of praise to God took several forms of prayer 
as when Solomon dedicated the temple in 1 Kings 8, praise in singing as individuals, 2 Samuel 23, 1, and in choirs, Nehemiah 12, praise with musical instruments, Psalm 150, and praise with dancing in Exodus, Samuel, and Psalm. But God makes it clear that he won't be satisfied with only the forms of worship. Sacrifices and music and dancing have no meaning apart from a heart and life truly dedicated to the Lord. God's words to the prophet Micah in Micah chapter 6 verses 6 to 8 clearly states the truth. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown all you people what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Michael's attempt for her husband, David, revealed her own lack of true dedication. She was content to be a critical spectator rather than a true worshipper of God. Whenever anyone puts appearances or tradition or form above a true desire to worship our God and Saviour, we'd best step carefully and read the words of God to Micah, the prophet, which as which are as true for us today as they were for the Israelites of the prophet's day. We will now listen to 1 Samuel chapter 18, verses 20 to 27. In the meantime, Saul's daughter Michael had fallen in love with David, and Saul was delighted when he heard about it. Here's another chance to see him killed by the Philistines, Saul said to himself. But to David he said, Today you have a second chance to become my son-in-law. Then Saul told his men to say to David, The king really likes you, and so do we. Why don't you accept the king's offer and become his son-in-law? When Saul's men said these things to David, he replied, How can a poor man from a humble family afford the bride price for the daughter of a king? When Saul's men reported this back to the king, he told them, Tell David that all I want for the bride price is one hundred Philistine foreskins. Vengeance on my enemies is all I really want. But what Saul had in mind was that David would be killed in the fight. David was delighted to accept the offer. Before the time limit expired, he and his men went out and killed 200 Philistines. Then David fulfilled the king's requirement by presenting all their foreskins to him. So Saul gave his daughter Michael to David to be his wife. 1 Samuel 19 verses 11 to 17 Michael saves David's life. Then Saul sent troops to watch David's house. They were told to kill David when he came out the next morning. But Michael, David's wife, warned him, If you don't escape tonight, you will be dead by morning. So she helped him climb out through a window, and he fled and escaped. Then she took an idol and put it in his bed, covered it with blankets, and put a cushion of goat's hair at its head. When the troops came to arrest David, she told them he was sick and couldn't get out of bed. But Saul sent the troops back to get David. He ordered, bring him to me in his bed so I can kill him. But when they came to carry David out, they discovered that it was only an idol in the bed with a cushion of goat's hair at its head. Why have you betrayed me like this and let my enemy escape? Saul demanded of Michael. I had to, Michael replied. He threatened to kill me if I didn't help him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now reflect on the following question. How would you describe Michael in these passages? Thank you for listening. It's so important to worship and God's words to Micah, which says to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. That is what the Lord requires of us so may we see the importance of worshiping and walking with the lord in jesus name amen (laughs) 
Please join me tomorrow as we take a look at her promises. Stay safe. Keep praying. God bless. Good afternoon and welcome to our daily devotions where we are looking at the women of the Bible. This week we are focusing on Saul's daughter, Michael. This is part three of five where we take a look at her promise. Michael's contempt for true worship can be contrasted with David's love of worship. He worshipped God with abandon, with a true heart. His devotion was so deep, so real it had to be expressed in the most extravagant praise and in dancing with all his might. That's the sort of worship God is looking for from his people and he responds with a promise to bless. Promises in Scripture 1 Chronicles 16 verse 29 Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in this in the splendor of his holiness. Nehemiah 9 verses 5 to 6. Blessed be your glorious name and may it be exalted above all blessing and praise. You alone are the Lord. You have made the heavens, even the highest heavens, and all their starry host, the earth and all that is on it, and seas and all that is in them. You give life to everything, and the multitudes of heaven worship you. Psalm 95 verses 6 to 7 Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God. Psalm 100 verse 4 Enter His gates with thanksgiving, and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise His name. We will now listen to the following passages. 1 Samuel 25 verses 43 to 44. David also married Ahinoam from Jezreel, making both of them his wives. Saul, meanwhile, had given his daughter Michael, David's wife, to a man from Gileam named Palti, son of Laish. 2 Samuel 3 verses 14 to 16. David then sent this message to Ishbosheth, Saul's son. Give me back my wife, Michael, for I bought her with the lives of 100 Philistines. So Ishbosheth took Michael away from her husband, Palti, son of Laish. Palti following along behind her as far as Bahurim, weeping as he went. Then Abner told him, Go back home. So Palti returned. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now reflect on the following question. After Michael helped David escape, she didn't see him for more than nine years. How do you think these events in the intervening years affected her? And how would they have affected you? Thank you for listening. Please join me tomorrow as we take a look at her legacy of prayer. Stay safe. Keep praying. God bless. Good afternoon and welcome to our daily devotions where we are looking at the women of the Bible. This week we are focusing on Saul's daughter, Michael. This is part four of five where we take a look at her legacy of prayer. 1 Samuel 18 verses 20 to 21 Now Saul's daughter, Michael, was in love with David, and when they told Saul about it, he was pleased. I will give her to him, he thought, so that she may be a snare to him, and so that the hand of the Philistines may be against him. 2 Samuel 6 verse 16 as the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michael's daughter of Saul watched from a window, and when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. We can reflect on 1 Samuel 19 verses 11 to 17 and 2 Samuel 6 verses 16 to 23. 
we can praise God because he is the same yesterday, today and forever. We can offer thanks that God gives us the freedom to choose how we will respond to him. We can confess, allowing scepticism or cynicism to infiltrate your faith. Or we can ask God to increase your awe of him. We will now listen to 2 Samuel 6 verses 12 to 23. Then King David was told, The Lord has blessed Obed-Edom's household and everything he has because of the ark of God. So David went there and brought the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with a great celebration. After the men who were carrying the ark of the Lord had gone six steps, David sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. And David danced before the Lord with all his might, wearing a priestly garment. So David and all the people of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouts of joy and the blowing of ram's horns. Michael's contempt for David. But as the ark of the Lord entered the city of David, Michael, the daughter of Saul, looked down from her window. When she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she was filled with contempt for him. They brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the special tent David had prepared for it. And David sacrificed burnt offerings and peace offerings to the Lord. When he had finished his sacrifices, David blessed the people in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies. Then he gave to every Israelite man and woman in the crowd a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people returned to their homes. When David returned home to bless his own family, Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet him. She said in disgust, how distinguished the king of Israel looked today, shamelessly exposing himself to the servant girls like any vulgar person might do. David retorted to Michael, I was dancing before the Lord who chose me above your father and all his family. He appointed me as the leader of Israel, the people of the Lord, so I celebrate before the Lord. Yes, and I am willing to look even more foolish than this, even to be humiliated in my own eyes. But those servant girls you mentioned will indeed think I am distinguished. So Michael, the daughter of Saul, remained childless throughout her entire life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now respond to the following questions. Number one, why do you think Michael responded to this scene of worship as she did? Why do you suppose she was in her room watching from the window instead of in the crowd participating? Number two, what is your biggest barrier to true worship? What could bring that barrier down so that you are a participant rather than a spectator? Number three, what was David trying to tell Michael in 2 Samuel 6 verses 21 to 22? Number four, think about your own experience of suffering, perhaps even victimization. How have you responded? Has suffering tended to make you tough and bitter, shattered and helpless? strong and full of faith, and why. Thank you for listening. Please join me tomorrow as we take a look at how we can lift our hearts. Stay safe, keep praying, God bless. Good afternoon and welcome to our daily devotions where we are looking at the women of the Bible. This week we are focusing on Saul's daughter, Michael, and this is our final session where we take a look at how we can lift our heart. Part 5 of 5 David was so exuberant that he danced in public as a way of worshipping God. Now we may not be quite there yet, but... What I would like to encourage you all to do this week is to really just free yourself in worship, loosen up yourself and just allow the spirit to lead you as you worship and praise, just loosen up, set free, whatever you feel the spirit is leading you to do, just do, just relax in God's presence and just be free and be yourselves, enjoy yourself. You're in God's presence and it's, if it's not worth getting excited about God, then who is it worth getting excited about? 
So I encourage you this week, really worship your heart self. Worship, be yourself, be free, loosen up and just enjoy the presence of God. Let us pray. Shout with joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing praise to your name. Amen. Thank you for joining me this week as we reflected on Michael. She suffered a lot and it looked, we were exploring the ways in which she responded to that suffering. Ultimately, God knows our hearts. He knows all what we have done. And, you know, we really do beat up on ourselves sometimes. And we have to know that God has seen everything. God knows everything. He knows how we feel. He knows what's going on, what we need to focus on and be encouraged by Michael's story is to turn to him in all things. Turn to him and how is it that we respond in times of suffering? Do Where do we show our faith? God is there with us each step of the way, leading and directing us and all he wants is us for us to seek him in all things. So thank you for joining me. Please be encouraged by the uh, Michael story this week. And next week, we will be taking a look at Abigail. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Keep praying. God bless.